gets me on, yes. Okay, great. So now I have you guys on live chat. Oh, there are new things in the corner now. Huh. I don't want to touch any of these, these things, but okay. Uh, let's see. Um, so today we're going to be making uh, this. Let me show you. Um, it's uh, this uh, tabule with uh, kofta. And to be honest, I don't know how to say these words in the right way. So um, that's all we have. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see, here's the chat. Oh, hello, Silk Harvest Magna. Hello. I'm going to see if I can move you guys so that, oops. There we go. There, okay. Sorry for the pile of stuff. Um, Let's see, so I'll start by just like in doing an inventory of the stuff that I have here. I have a, a grenade apple. How, how do you say it in English? I don't even know. Can you guys see anything? No, you can't. You can't see anything. Poor guys. Hmm. I hadn't really thought of this once I turn it on. Okay, there we go. I think that you can, guys can see me now. Uh, do you guys possibly know what this thing is called in English? Uh, pomegranates. Pomegranates. That's what it is. I've never actually eaten pomegranates or like made pomegranates, so I have no idea. A garlic, a tomato, uh, a sad cucumber, and bulgur, and breadcrumbs, panko, yeah, and some spices, and some salad, and some mint, and then there's meat in the fridge. So the first thing that we need to do is to uh, cook up bulgur. So I'm going to open up the bulgur packet. These packages are so hard to open. How are you guys doing? I hope that you're having a good time. I'm feeling way better now than I've been before, uh, at least, so that's nice. Last weekend was pretty awful. Okay, I need to put some water. It's Lebanese. Hi, NP community, Naim al -Busaydi. Hi, that's a new name. And Salasium is there, hello. Hello, and Lord Gonzo is here. It's, it's good that I'm doing better. Yes, thank you, thank you, because it's it's been shit. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. But so, well, Tabule and Kafta is, I mean, it's Lebanese, I, I guess, but it's also all sorts of other places eat tabule and kofta. I, I think it's Syrian as well. Uh, but maybe, or, like, originally maybe it was from Lebanon. I haven't done my research, so I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I'm cooking up the water. And then putting um, putting it on high heat. You guys can't see that because my um, pan is behind the camera. Uh, but we're doing that while we're doing the rest, basically. Um, I think that the vegetables are going to have to wait for a while. Um, because we're going to be doing the meat 
first. I don't know if pomegranates are supposed to be a little bit smushy, but it, it seems a bit smushy, so I don't know if it's an actual good pomegranate. Anyway, that was that. The bulgur should be under a... Oops. I think that maybe I'll have to move the camera. Uh, is it still freezing in Sweden? More Middle East area. Yeah, Middle East area, basically. Uh, when I was a kid, we would buy tabbouleh in the, um, in the supermarkets. I mean, obviously it's not like the actual thing, but it, it's, it was, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> tabbouleh is one of my favorite foods. Um, but obviously I'm not like a classic, I mean, I'm not from a family that makes tabbouleh on the regular, so I don't know. Brave little toaster POV. <laughs> it's cool weather with you. Well, that's great. Where do you live, uh, Naim al -Busayde? I mean, here it's, uh, at least it's not freezing and cold. It's, uh, raining. So that makes a change from all the snow. It's been around like two degrees, which is actually pretty warm for here. Apparently, according to my parents, it's the same down in France, so um, nothing new. Okay, let's save you guys from the heat of the of, of that. Okay, you can see the mess behind in the kitchen. There we go. Okay. Brave Little Toaster was a traumatizing film. I'm sorry, but it was traumatizing. I never managed to um, to really understand. Uh, I, I don't know why I kept watching it. I guess that's because we had like the cassette when I was a small girl. And so then I kept watching it, but it's like it was traumatizing me every time. And my mom knew that it was traumatizing me, and yet, and yet she would make me watch it. Okay. There we go. So it says approximately uh, 10 minutes under um, uh, the cover. Um, sorry about the lighting. I can't really make it better than this. Um... Okay, so many deaths, it's zero degrees, so ice and water on top of it. Oh, that's, that's bad, Celestia. It's, uh, I don't like, I don't like ice. I don't like walking with ice. So by now, it's been around a week that like the ice has started to thin out and, and stuff. Uh, but I mean, it, it had been snowing last week and so, I don't know. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to open these packages, but I can't really... Okay. I think that uh, we should take out the meat from the, uh, from the package. But that we should also um, take out the cutting board. Well... Let's take out the small cutting board and do the, the garlic because that's pretty. I don't want to cut the garlic and then have all the rest all around because garlic really smells. There, there we go. There's the garlic. I need to get like a tripod or something because I'm not really uh, doing this <laughs> well. But uh, I'm doing the garlic and um, talking at the same time. That's kind of how these things go. Uh, for those of you who are new here and who don't know what's going on, basically, I, I'm new to cooking, uh, but it's been going quite well actually on these lives. So I've gotten into like trying this. HelloFresh stuff. Um, 
but I can't really say that I that I am good at it. Like I try. Um, and then when I feel like this is taking too much of my energy, then I just check you guys out and see what's going on in the chat. Obviously, this is not the most effective way of uh, cutting up a garlic, but there we are. No, so it's it's been cold here still, but it's it's been lighter outside at least because when when you live so far north, the um, the light like you start gaining like minutes every day when it's like in in the spring like the amount of minutes that you have in a day starts going up and up really fast and you really feel the difference because in december it's like the, the sun goes down at, at 3 p.m so that really <laughs> that's really depressing uh oh man Muscat? Sounds miserable, yes. I thought I was the only one who speaks Arabic on the channel. Good to know. Hmm. Well, that's cool. I, uh, I don't know where, where that is, um, name, but, um, I have people from all over the world. It's quite crazy, actually. Okay. Sorry if I can't really um, be present because I need to actually concentrate on what I'm doing um, because I really don't know. Okay. Uh oh. Well, you guys see what happens when I'm in the kitchen. Maybe you guys don't see, but uh, you probably heard it. Uh oh. That's that's the problem of having it under um, a cover. Okay, come on. Okay, good. There we go. Okay, I think that uh, the situation is under control again. <sighs> but obviously I made a mess around the... Okay, right when I was saying that I needed to concentrate. <laughs> uh, okay, right, right, right. Uh, let's take out the... We need to keep an eye on that. Um, so here's the meat. Okay. For those of you who are who, once again, I in Sweden the, the meat comes into like these packages like this, which is quite gross actually, but. Um, So I need to like squish it out of this tube. It's quite satisfying actually, but <laughs> it is kind of weird. They, they sell all sorts of things in plastic sausage tubes like this. Um, they sell um, beetroot and rice pudding and that kind of thing. In France, they would just like, they would think that that was disgusting to keep products in such a manner. <laughs> so my mom, when she came to Sweden for the first time, she got really grossed out by, by that because she lived in the US and in France and stuff, and she'd never seen meat in a tube like this. But that's how it is. Okay. Uh, originally I'm from... Yes. Oh, you're talking about things. That's good. That's good. 
Uh, nice warm vacation is just what doctor ordered. <laughs> yeah, I do need a vacation. It's terrible. Uh, I really need it. Okay, here we've got these. And so what we need to do is uh, we're going to have an egg and we're going to have these. Oh, no, th this should be put into a um, bowl. I feel like I keep having to do dishes 10,000 times a day. Okay. This is for later, this plate. Okay, so we need to add the, the spice mix. Ugh, is that meat? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> we, we weren't near, nearing the end of the disasters in this kitchen. Okay. Oof, this, this uh, smells spicy. I had the choice to order uh, Swedish meatballs, but I just thought that it was so boring for me. I know that they would have been interesting for you guys, but uh, uh, yeah, it's like there are so many places where I can get Swedish meatballs that I don't want to make my own. <laughs> um, but it would have been interesting. It would have been an interesting experience. Okay. Uh, so we've got eggs. We're going to use one egg. We've got spice all over the place. What's going on? Uh, let me let me uh, catch up on what's going on. Um, let's see. Oh, Silesium, I haven't quite lived in areas during times where gathering at, at the pub at night was a thing. I get the vibe from that with this live and chat. Oh, that's nice. We're like, we're like another pub together. It's INFP and not INFP. The, the, the pub where the, where the cook doesn't know what they're doing in the kitchen. And here we have some excitement with the overheating pans. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, sick Purvis, Magna. Yeah, the multitasking does not work. Jumbo-sized military rations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't understand why it's, like, in a plastic tube rather than a, in a can. Maybe it would be weird. <laughs> uh, this is funny chat. Okay. Like a speakeasy with a password to enter. Pub table and performing. What a like a performance that we're doing. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Um, so one egg, salt, the garlic. Okay, we put the garlic into the this thing. I mean the garlic pieces are huge, but that doesn't matter. Oh no, the pan is doing stuff again. Couldn't you just stop doing that, Pam? You're so excited. Okay. I mean, I guess that wasn't a good idea to put to put the cover on it. I think I'll just leave it without. It's it's not safe <laughs> otherwise. Oh, all right. Okay, let, let's put a little, like, a low heat back on. All right. Now we put the egg in there, and I... Yeah, well, the thing is, uh, the eggs are expensive. I, uh... But I, I can buy, like, eggs that are made on, on farms quite close by, because I live in a semi-rural area. Uh, so, like, I can find that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, they have like egg producers in the area, so it doesn't cost that much more. 
to be honest. Um, these aren't from, from a local producer though, but somewhere in Sweden at least. Okay, so egg, uh, pepper, and the panko. And I think that it's a half a... Okay. I feel like there's too much spice, but that's just me, the European talking. The white girl can't handle any spice. <laughs> uh, okay. Hmm. Okay, half a, half a package of the panko. I hate calling it panko because it's not panko. It's breadcrumbs. It's just it seems that HelloFresh always gives you panko. Okay, half a package. How are you supposed to know how much half a package is when you can't see through it? I don't even know what to do with the rest of this. I'll just eat the breadcrumbs or something. I don't know. Put it with the bread, I guess. Okay, so now there's this mush, and this should be mixed. And I don't know what utensil to use, but I guess a spoon. I guess a spoon. No, okay, not the spoon. That wasn't a good idea. It's just that kind of need to like separate these things. <laughs> I once had a friend who did not see the value of having a fork. He did not understand why you would use a fork for anything. Or wait, was it spoons? No, no, it was, it was forks. He just never understood the, under, the meaning of a fork, like why? Why would you have a fork? And I was like, but you need forks sometimes. I mean, I understand that in countries where you use chopsticks, well, the concept of a fork is like, you don't need it, but you can use chopsticks to pick up stuff much better than... Okay. I guess I'm supposed to actually use my hands for this, but it just, it just has egg and it's gross. I'll have to manipulate it somehow anyway, because I'll have to make these into patties. I feel like I'm missing something. No, apparently not. <sighs> this does not look good, but... <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe they didn't intend for the egg to be this sticky? I don't know. Maybe I put too much panko, that was maybe it. Oh well. Okay, well I guess that I, there's nothing to it than to use my hands, so I'll be looking at the, the chat while I'm waiting. Okay, what's going on? Uh, why are eggs getting expensive in the States? I don't know. I think that everything is getting more expensive. It just sucks. Yeah, inflation. And hello, is it true that the Swedish government has set up booklets on what to do if Russians invade? Um, Yes and no. Yes and no. I was actually thinking about that the other day. That, that's weird. Uh, I was thinking of the, the Russian beluga whale uh, who is sent to spy on Swedish, in Swedish waters. So he goes... Uh, so right now he's apparently just roaming around in Swedish waters and he has like a sonar kind of thing on him. Like a a chip on him. He's called the Voldemir because Vol means uh, whale and it's a joke on Vladimir obviously. Um, but yeah, um, a few years ago though, it wasn't, it wasn't when Russia was attacking uh, Ukraine. It was way before that. Uh, way before 
it wasn't just targeted about Russia. It was it was before COVID. It was before everything. I, I don't know what year it was. Maybe it was 2018 or 19 or something. I was living in Stockholm then. And um, I'm trying to make six patties. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> These little patties are... There. These little meatballs. Um, so it was before everything started falling apart and, and stuff. No, it was way before that. I can't remember really. I think it was 2018, something like that. And I get in my post box, like, what to do if the crisis comes. That was the name of the little brochure that we got. And... I guess that it's not... Swedish was pretty socialist, uh, at least in the past, and a lot of the ideals are... can sound pretty communistic to, like, um, Americans, uh, or at least my American family. So they didn't really understand what was going on, and they think that it was, like, propaganda, you know, by the country. And yeah, in a way it was, but it wasn't about Russia, because this was years before. I mean, I think Crimea and everything was... Well, Russia hasn't been acting great uh, internationally over the years. Um, but this was if the crisis comes. And ironically, that did not help us at all during COVID because we had no idea what, what COVID was when it started. Um, but I got that little brochure home and I was like, I, I barely read it, but it was really weird that everybody got it in their post box. Um, and this was like before COVID restrictions like, we didn't know how, how much power the government had in sending us such informations and stuff. Um, at least not me, I've not lived in times of war. Um, at least not in the countries that I'm in. So, like, for me it was weird that, like, the government would insert themselves into our lives like that. And, like, send us this brochure. And it t told us, like, you know, keep a flashlight in your garage or something and make sure that you have water for at least three days or something like that. And I, I was a student, so, like, I didn't care. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now I need to wash my hands, like, badly. Ugh. I'll have to get them dirty once again, but I think that I did a pretty good job making eight patties that that should be enough uh, patties okay so let's get back to what's going on let's check the I feel like I'm just going through utensils this is why I don't usually cook but oh, the bulgur seems good I like bulgur hmm It's good. That is good. Okay, well, so let's stop the heat on that so that we don't get another accident. Now we get out the pan. I've been doing another HelloFresh in the morning, which I'll be posting later this week, uh, which was um, salmon. So I, I use this pan with salmon and it's still kind of oily, so I guess that that's not too bad. Okay, now let's take that away from the heat. Okay, we're going to have to put these into there, so I'll have to use my hands anyway. Hmm. Okay. Then I put some olive oil into this pan. Okay, 
and then warm up the, the thing. Okay, and then put the, the biffar, the little sticks, into, in there until they're brown. I think that these patties were supposed to be six big ones, but like, who wants to eat such a huge meatball at one time? Not me, at least. <laughs> okay, there we go. I don't know how these things will keep together. I guess that they will somehow mix together with the egg. Okay, there we go. There we go. Oh, I left a mess, didn't it? Okay. Let me check the messages. Oh no, I've missed so many, so many things. Sorry. I, I went on about talking about Russia and the whale and I got to... Uh, Messed up. <laughs> um, what does count as a semi-rural area? Small town or longer distance to near center downtown? Um, I mean that for me it is rural as somebody who uh, grew up in a big town and who um, studied in Stockholm, which is also a big town. Uh, but most people would probably not count it as uh, rural area they would count it as a city um and it's an hour from stockholm so it's not that far um it's more the fact that like things close early and you know there aren't all the amenities that you would want there is a hospital though and that's why i work in that in here i'm wondering where's schumann <laughs> well he comes later he took a vacation from lives. Yeah, no, uh, he's allowed to take vacations from lives. I missed and slept during the last live. Perhaps Schumann is occupied, yes. Hello, Carm. Hi. Schumann came. <laughs> All the panic when you're not there. <laughs> you're missed. But I knew that you were going to be there, even if just for a moment. Um, oh. It's nice that you guys are like looking forward to seeing each other in the chat. Uh, howdy, howdy. The Russian sonar whale story was pretty metal. Don't get that kind of news over here. Um, yes. Um, well, that was now a few years ago, though. Um, I don't know if Voldemir is still in our waters. But, uh, you know, he's just like roaming the Arctic Sea and stuff and then He's he's trained to like report back to Moscow, I guess. Um, I mean, Moscow is not that far from um, Sweden, but uh, I mean, I don't know why Sweden was so worried. Um, it seems like uh, Finland is less worried. I don't know, uh, Solisium, you're in. Um, you're in Finland. Is there a lot of worry about the threat? Because um, for me, what I was most worried about was that my brother would get drafted into into military service in Sweden. Because then, if there was a war, then he would have to go to war with Russia, which, like, you know, <laughs> wasn't wasn't ever our plan. Um, you know, Sweden has been. Uh, neutral for like a hundred years or something <sighs> but they do have military service which i'm not happy about because i'm anti-war i know that it's a simplistic matter but like i'm treating it as a simplistic subject but i know it's not but i'd rather not have military service like i feel like it's a waste of time if somebody is not interested in going to war, they shouldn't be forced to go into war. 
even if their country goes to war. Uh, that's my take on it. Okay, well now uh, it's time to uh, cut up all the vegetables. Since we've done the, um, the most important bit, which was the taboulet, which I'm going to put to the side here. And that is um, happening in a pan. Uh, let me change, change your position. <laughs> okay. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed the view. Uh, there. Okay, that's good. Because um, you're, you guys are on a, um, like a pan um, holder thing, so uh, you won't get burnt as, as you're in my phone. Um, yeah. Okay, I hope I'm not missing any chats. Okay, let me get out the big, the big cutting board. Okay, maybe I should move these, uh, it's, I'm terrible at multitasking. Where did my, um, spatula go? Well, they seem to be doing nicely. Maybe I should just turn the heat a little bit lower. <laughs> okay, these aren't at all meatballs, but <laughs> more like uh, patties, but that's okay. I'm glad I made them small. Okay, there we go. Uh, now let us do the this and the tomato. And this tomato, all the tomatoes are terrible uh, in HelloFresh. They're at, at least the Swedish version. They give me like orange tomatoes. So this one is actually pretty red for a HelloFresh tomato. So that is positive. Okay, let me take out the knife. The very dull knife. Okay. I guess that they want me to do this in very small pieces. We still have to do the um, pomegranate, which uh, is going to be exciting because uh, it's not like I... Well, they don't want you to have it too, too small pieces. They want bigger pieces, so that's bigger pieces. Um, hmm, it's look, sounding good in the pan. Something is happening. Ugh, I hate the insides of tomatoes. They just, ugh. Okay. And, okay. I always get confused when I'm going to be making, I mean, some people make cucumbers where they do like this. I do not see this as a win. That's that's something that my brother would say. <laughs> He'd be like, I do not see this as a win. <laughs> uh, okay, but I'm trying at least this new technique, but that, that, that this I'm not I'm not doing this right. Uh, all right. It was a good try. I don't know, Schumann, if you missed me, uh, like, d destroying uh, my bulgur pan, where I made everything, like, twice, <laughs> twice I uh, managed to get the water to boil over. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, glad nobody saw that, and then I remember that you guys are there. Um, which is awkward. Oh, okay. That's the first thing to fall today. So that means more spice.
That's the wool. I forget who made that wool. Was it uh, Celestia, maybe? I forget. Uh, okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what you guys thought of the poll that I did about people willing to see me brush my teeth. <laughs> it was, there was some uh, drama in the comments. Uh, I mean, not, not bad drama. I'm just saying that people were concerned why I was asking them that question. I haven't gone completely delusional just yet, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, let us check up on the meatballs. They're still kind of mushy. <coughs> oh, I think I put too much pepper. <laughs> I always sneeze when I put too much pepper. I, I have a low, low tolerance for spice, apparently. Something that I found out while doing this. Okay, good. There we go. And uh, let's just uh, quickly chop up the rest of this and go over to the to the seeds, because that is very important. Mm. I like cucumber. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, basically, cucumber is like sometimes the only vegetable that ever grows in Sweden. So that's all. That's all I eat. Sometimes it's like okay, beets. Beets, carrots, cucumbers. That's like all that Sweden can grow. Apples as well. There's an apple called um, Ingrid Marie, which um, I buy just because Ingrid is my name. So it makes me feel happy. Okay, now there's all this, which I guess we should put in a little bowl. Well, they have it in three separate bowls, but like, who cares? I mean, these things will have to be mixed up anyway, afterwards. Okay, well, I'd misjudged the size of this, but it should be enough for, for these. Good. There is that. Now, I don't like all of the seed stuff, so this goes into the sink. My, my brother hates raw tomatoes. He just hates having tomatoes and... He hates having tomatoes and sandwiches and stuff. And at the moment, my mom is making food for both my dad and my brother. And, um, yeah. They all have their specific tastes because, like, <laughs> because my brother has probably ADHD and my dad has probably autism, which is very funny. <laughs> Because, like, my dad will have a certain way of eating the food. And then my, uh, my brother will be, like, completely forgetting to eat meals. Uh, and, like, my mom having to deal with baths is, like, <laughs> ridiculous. Okay. Um, let's do the mint. I don't know how much mint we need, but I'm not going to be using mint for anything else. So let's uh, let's go. This is the mint. I mean, HelloFresh is quite wasteful. Uh, maybe I should like 
start growing my own um, my own things. I used to have a mint plant back when I lived in the south of Sweden. Uh, but <laughs> because it was the south of Sweden, I got more sunlight. If you can believe it, there is more sunlight in the south of Sweden than uh, even a little bit further north. Um, I was like at the southernmost tip, pretty much. So you could see the difference between, basically. Okay, I don't know how how you're supposed to do this, but just a little. Don't worry, I will check up on you guys. I haven't forgotten you. Sometimes I feel like I'm just like leaving you be, but I, I don't know if you want to be left alone or if you want me to to uh, read your comments. Okay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wow, I'm missing a lot here. Such peace of mind. On a scale of 1 to 10, how is your day going? Uh, today was an okay day. I would say that I would be uh, on around a 7, which was good. I mean, uh, some days this week have been around like a 2, so I don't think it's going that well. Vegetable eye view here. Oh, good. Valdemir would be proud. <laughs> Okay, well, Celestia Massa has a seven on, on uh, her day, so, or maybe an eight. That's great. Yeah, I have to be careful. I am making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and Sig Purvis has, has a lot of exams, and I know uh, my brother is also in the middle of exams. Um, really stressed out, like, my mom told me that he forgot to eat his breakfast. Um, he also forgot to eat lunch, or basically he was studying all, all like in the library all the time, and well, he basically just didn't eat lunch. And then he came home after, then he went and played badminton, and then, <laughs> and then he didn't eat until like nine in the evening, which uh, yeah, I mean worried my mom quite a bit. I, I talked to them on Skype uh, yesterday. Uh, drop stuff is good. I was worried um, that you would add pieces of your fingers into the dish. Mm, yes, the cucumber trick I cannot do because I am too inexperienced and clumsy. Um, it's just it frustrates me when people try to tell me how to how to do it, and then like they they show me a method that is actually more dangerous. Uh, it was a friend who showed me that, but. Maybe I'm doing it wrong the way that they showed me, but it, it seems that that was the way that it was showing. I've only seen you boiling the good bulgur. Okay. Not one gone completely delusional just yet. <laughs> it would be stranger if you wanted to brush someone else's teeth. Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting prospect. Apples are so delicious. Ate my first one in five years. What's going on, Lord Gonzo? You were having your braces removed. Hmm. I like apples. Uh, I don't have a pet, so sick parvis man. <laughs> um. I live in an apartment where you can't have pets, and I've never had pet. Post care with the retainer is torture. Hi, Alexander Washman. You always come to life. That's uh, always nice. Lord Gonzo, I had uh, braces for eight years. So I know a thing or two about that. I didn't care. I just... I just cut apples. But I bit into apples. And maybe that's the reason why it was eight years. <laughs> maybe because I, I was too invested in eating apples. Anyway, Ingrid Marie apples are uh, good, but they're not the best kind of apple. Um, 
I think that there are better apples out there. Um, I like Pink Lady and Gala, but uh, the Honey Crisp and those kinds are, are really, really good. But they're like really sweet, so it's probably not like the healthiest of apples. Um, okay, there we go, all of that. Now uh, we should uh, rinse the spinach. So the spinach is in a bag, so you see. And, uh, last time I did not rinse the spinach enough, so I need to really make sure that I do it well this time. Oh, I missed. Oh. Spinach is something that can really easily fall to the floor. Okay, I'll just rinse like each, uh, like a little part of it at a time. There. I think that there should be more mint to to spinach ratio, but I guess it's cheaper with spinach. I don't know. There once the, the ventilation. I think that the meatballs should be almost done. Okay. Now we're going to be doing the fun part. So I'm going to be turning off the uh, heat on the pan. I'm putting... Um, this outside of the heat source. Okay, and uh, we're going to be taking away these, which we have the, this. Okay, here we've got, these need to be washed. Okay. So now we take the big bowl. Maybe we can take a smaller bowl. This is a small bowl, that's good. Well, we'll need to use the bigger bowl afterwards anyway for putting the food in it. But first we're going to uh, they tell you how to deal with the pomegranate and I've never dealt with one. I know that you're supposed to put it underwater. So it tells you like this, roll it so to roll it, just to roll it. Oh, so that cracks. Oh, that's just quite nice. Actually. Okay. So I've uh, rolled it and cracked it. Crack the code. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I cracked the code. Okay. And then it says to cut it in half. Now, which way would you cut a pomegranate in half? I'm asking for audience participation here. Uh, should I cut it in half like this or cut it in half like this? So through the stem or like that? I'll, I'll let you guys answer while I, <laughs> while I think. Grenadine ASMR, yeah. <laughs> I love that we're talking laws today. We're talking legal issues, like, <laughs> or, or more politics, I guess, politics about uh, Russia, Russian invasion and, and uh, the legalization of weed. I mean, uh, Sweden has not legalized weed uh, or marijuana. Um, I had a patient who, a psychiatric patient, he really wanted me to, to uh, prescribe him weed. And I was like, no, I'm not allowed to. And he was like, that's stupid. And I was like, 
Well, I know. <laughs> and that was that. Um, okay. Let's uh, just fill it with water well. It feels like I've given you like a philosophical question with this pomegranate. <laughs> okay. Maybe sideways? Yeah, but sideways in which way, sick? Is it sideways like through the stem or not through the stem? Because that's, that's a better way to explain it. Not through the stem. Okay, thank you. I will, I shall, shall do so. I wonder, Sik, if you, if you eat a lot of tabule, where you're from. Because um, maybe you know more about tabule than me. Okay. This is scary. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, no. Oh, things are starting to get stained. I feel... When I was little, I would always... Um... Oh, I know this is the feel. <laughs> this is like, you know, dark academia um, aesthetics, where like there's always a person who's holding a pomegranate. Like... Oh, the temptation of sin. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, so now I understand why we need to have it in, uh, in a bowl, because that was, that has probably stained my, uh, my thing forever. Okay, so now the point is to get rid of all the seeds. Oh, this is a bloodbath. This is gross. They're kind of nice. I mean, after all, I am a doctor and I like gross stuff. Okay. It, it's something, it does feel a little bit like you're, you're doing something illegal. <laughs> Ooh. Like, how do you get it out? Oh, okay. Well, that was... A miss. That was a miss. I'll just go into let let the things fall at the bottom, and just take the outside off. This is new adventures and culinary experiences. I, I would do this just as like a creative art activity or something <laughs> it's like a craft you're like hmm getting your fingers deep in there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh you rarely eat tabbouleh there are probably other dishes that are great That's one of the things that I eat every time I go to France. Oh, you went to a Lebanese restaurant. Yeah, I guess that's, I mean, because of the, the colonies, <laughs> then uh, France probably has some pretty good tabbouleh. Um, or at least restaurants, like Lebanese restaurants, where you can get good tabbouleh. You can also get good couscous. I guess that you eat more couscous, don't you? In um, Algeria. I just uh, really like couscous. And I like I like many things. Um, these pomegranate seeds are driving me insane, but. 
have you ever been to Germany is Alexander's question and uh, yes I have but mostly on my way to somewhere else I must uh, admit um, I've uh, there's an airport in Bremen where they have a low-cost flights uh, to Sweden and I've gone there twice uh, because once it was like um, or like um, I just stopped at the airport. Usually I stopped at the airport when I was small, Frankfurt and Brussels. Uh, well, Brussels is not in uh, is not in Germany, but um, sometimes it would it would like alternate between Frankfurt and Brussels, and sometimes it was M Munich um, or München. But no, I've. I've, I've been to Germany, um, but like basically the part that was uh, closest to uh, Belgium. Um, where it's basically like, you don't know if you're in Belgium or you're in Germany in, in certain places like Maastricht and there are these places. I, I, like we kept with my family, we kept driving in and out of Germany, Belgium, Germany, Belgium, and then we almost ended up in Luxembourg. And then, and we went to the Netherlands, but I only got to see half of the trip because they picked me up at Bremen airport um, from France. Like they'd seen all of the fun stuff there is to see in the Netherlands, like the, uh, the windmills and and the flowers and the stuff and I basically I saw the um, a Van Gogh um, a Van Gogh paintings okay I'm getting sidetracked about the Netherlands uh, no I haven't been much to Germany I must say once um, my plane to the US um, well uh, our, our connecting flight was cancelled so we were stuck in Munich. No, we weren't. It was, was it Munich? I don't know if it was Munich. But basically all we did for those two days that we were stuck was that we went to a German, a German McDonald's. And <laughs> it was, uh, well, it was fun because they had all sorts of stuff. Uh, Germany has really great bakeries. I must say, and I'm saying that as a French person, like the breads are huge and there's a lot of them. In France, like the breads are not at all that huge. Um, and like the pastries are big too. Everything is so much tinier in France. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I know. I, I have German friends, so that's what I know. And then Schumann keeps me updated on German things, I guess. There's a strong Lebanese community. A couscous almost every weekend. Mm, that's nice. Do you think that there are 64 socionic subtypes? Would Dario Nardi explain or just 16? Oh, Ali, hello, Ali Murad. Uh, I don't care much for socionics. So, no, I don't believe in that. Um, I think it's complicated enough having 16 types. And then you have the Enneagram, so you can kind of have the flavor of a certain type, you know, depending on your Enneagram. Um, but I don't believe that there are that many personality types because that's just is so confusing. Like a, a system that is too confusing is, is not a good system. Um, then Dario Nardi is pretty cool because he was really into um, neuroscience and like how that could actually manifest in the brain. Uh, so I, I do think that he had some he had some good points, but uh, I don't really know about uh, having so many subtypes. 
my my uh, INFJ friend had explained to me this kind of stuff, and because he was into socionics, but I, I I really don't get it. I must admit that I I'm not smart enough to really understand socionics. Hello, I'm ENFJ. Oh, that's cool. There aren't that many ENFJs that come on this channel. My computer just turned itself off. I need to wake it up, but I can't because my hands are full of pomegranate. It's almost like this uh, seed thing is more time consuming than the whole rest of the recipe. Okay, now let's um, drain the water, I guess, a little bit. Okay, mm. I'm getting rid of like the extra pulp pieces. Okay, well, I guess that all that is left is to put it all together, but I will check. Uh, okay, what was the US like? I would like to go by, I'm a bit hesitate because the crime rate. I mean, what, what, uh, Europeans who have never been to the US need to know is that Americans aren't joking when they say that the the country is 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 so diverse like I know that it's, it, it can seem ridiculous um because like you know the US is just it's just the US right um, but there is difference. It's like saying that, uh, oh, well, uh, Germany has a high crime rate or not a high crime rate, you know, like you can't do that kind of generalization. Um, I mean, sure, there are some countries in the world where there's a very high crime rate. And so you might feel unsafe, but I don't think that the U.S. has an extremely high crime rate. There's a high incarceration rate, which has nothing to do with that. Um, so no, I wouldn't be worried about that. Um, there is a lot of inequality in the US. Uh, I saw it firsthand when I went to New York. And my cousin got kind of angry at me because I, <laughs> I basically told her that I didn't like New York that much. Um, she doesn't live in New York anymore. She lives in the, uh, on the other coast. I got some pomegranate from all over the place. This is terrible. Okay. We need, uh, we need some whip wipes, like, immediately before this. Oh god, I'm already staining stuff. Staining the wood and everything. Oh. oh god. Okay, sorry for the impromptu uh, stress. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What was the USA like? Good. I like the US. Um, it's an infinite loop. Yes. Is there any ways to contact you on other platforms? We can do a MTI communication. No. No. <laughs> uh, special cases exist, but uh, otherwise, no. Uh, not at the moment, at least. Um, I'd rather keep things on here because it's just easier for me to deal. At the moment, I'm trying to like not 
have so much social media presence on other social media. I feel like YouTube is a little bit different from regular social media because it's not like I can chat with you guys on here. And I know that I maybe like maybe you would like to chat with me, but that's not the point. Okay. There we go. Now we uh, mix all of that. Okay, so we put all that together. Okay, so now we put this in and we put the tabbouleh in. I need to take off some of the water. Ugh, it's become a sort of film on top of the water, which is quite gross. But, uh, ugh, okay. There we go. And then we take a little bit more. Yeah, and so uh, I saw like a glimpse of that Schumann is uh, taking is taking a little bit of a vacation, which is good. Um, he deserves all of the vacation. We all do. Okay, well, this tabule is not uh, really drained from water, but okay. But what is good with this spatula is that it has holes in it, so it can kind of drain the water. Okay. And the rest we will drain like a regular person with a straw. Oh god. Mm. Good. Okay, great. Now all of this in there. I don't know if I want to put all of the spinach in there, but. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Uh, we do need a lot of mint though, because that's what makes tabule good is uh, the mint. Okay. Mm. This looks good. I think that we should put, what do they want? Uh, more salt and pepper. <laughs> salt. Pepper. There we go. That is nice. Okay. And then uh, what we do is that we um, put it in a dish. And there, I feel like I need um, to do more dishes once again. I should uh, have more deep, deep uh, bowls. Okay. Let me go back to the chat because now I think that I need a little pause. <laughs> no, I like the introvert feeling boomed out. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> sorry, Ali. Um, you can still uh, participate in the chats and in, and in the comments. German bakery is not delicious. No, I, I love German bakeries. It's just I haven't tested all of the stuff there, so I don't know. Like, what is... What is good? Uh, so yeah. Okay, let me. I don't know. There's one bowl, but we can separate it into two bowls.
There we go. I mean, of course, the, the bulgur is way too really quitty, but better than it being too, too much, you know? Okay, here we go. Hmm. Okay, ta-da. Um, so here we go. This is what it looks like. There's a ghost on my right side. I don't know who's saying that. Okay. Uh, I need to see the chat. Robo Chef, yes. I am from metropolitan area near Frankfurt, yes. Okay, um, let's um, move with our food uh, to uh, the other place. Uh, so that I can actually uh, relax and talk a little bit more. And uh, let's, uh, you can see the beautiful uh, mess that this HelloFresh stuff has made. Um, I have mess all over the place. Um, but that is a mark of a well-lived life, you could say. Okay. Um, I need a fork. Fork, a fork, a fork. Got too many things. Okay. <sighs> okay. Let me check the messages that I have been neglecting all the time. Um, we usually end the chats by talking about uh, books, but I'll, I'll, I'll first need to see what's going on. Why are people talking about At Athena? Mormagil, hello. Um, thank you, Bravo Chef. Love the Dark Academia reference. If you choose your favorite deity from the Greek pantheon, what would it be? I was actually thinking of that um, lately because Vondel Pete made a video about uh, made a video about if uh, uh, getting a thousand subscribers um, is is detrimental to the INFP's ego, and um, he mentioned me, and I don't know, I got a little bit flustered by the, the fact that he mentioned me. Um, but it was. Um, <laughs> Um, and so he was talking about like, um, we always laugh about like that we're starting a cult or whatever. And so he was saying like, oh, well, we're like a little community and um, it's a community of like the INFP creators on YouTube. Um, and uh, I said, oh, it's like the pantheon of INFPs, um, of the INFP gods. <laughs> It's a joke, so don't don't take it seriously. I don't think I'm a god, but uh, if I could be one, I mean, I like Athena, um, but maybe I would be Artemis. Um, I do also like um, I mean, Apollo is pretty stuck up, but he is like the the god of the arts and of medicine but i guess that would be like asclepius is the god of medicine um i think kermes would be pretty cool like he he can uh, travel fast with his he has like these winged shoes so he can travel I do like Athena, though. You talk with that god sometimes, TM. He's a chill dude. <laughs> okay. Okay, there was some uh, confusion here. You're haunted by your, the ghost of your grandfather, which was a war veteran INFP. Okay. Um... 
is, is, is that supposed to be a joke or I don't know the ego conversation <laughs> hmm hmm that's good I like this hmm Let me um, go further back. Oh, um, Carm says, I've lived in the US for 48 years and I still don't know what's going on around here. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a crazy place to live, I guess, but um, it's so crazy because like there's a feeling of abundance oh i that's where my story was going i was telling my cousin that i didn't i didn't think that new york would be so dirty and by dirty i meant um i meant that there was a lot of trash just lying around and that the back streets were not cleaned and that it, like you see these huge like beautiful facades of these buildings and then like behind just in the side street because i walked um through manhattan basically i just uh, walked and walked and walked i didn't i i looked at taking the metro and i did but that was so dirty inside the metro and so old i didn't like it i usually like going into the metro even Paris and London Metro. London Metro is a bit like, both of them are pretty bad, but I, I'm just saying that I know that metros can be much nicer. And just because it's old doesn't mean that they can't fix things in like the, one of the world's biggest city, cities. So it's dirty, it's chaotic. And I guess that that's the, the whole vibe of New York. But she thought that I was like mad at, at the people living there, basically because there's a large homeless population. And that wasn't what I meant, like at all. It wasn't, I'm not against, like I know homeless people have places, need places to go. I never even mentioned the homeless people. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of um, American homeless people live in their cars. Uh, it's a different kind of homelessness because like, it, there aren't that many walkable cities in the US. So it's not really the same. A lot of people beg like on the motorways and stuff. Not on the motorways, but like on, on streets. It's not a very walkable place. A lot of things are super unequal, like my my uh, family in the US is well off, like really well off. They have like health insurance and all that, like they have, they can afford mm, to have like a house in the suburbs, that kind of thing. But some people can barely just go to the hospital because they have appendicitis or something, you know, and that is pretty, pretty terrible. New York is bad, California is 10 times worse. Is it? I've never been. My brother had good things to say about California. You like cherry, chariots of fire from Vangelis. Wait, chariots of fire to film. Vangelis is the music? Right? I think that that's Vangelis. Maybe. Tabule is Lebanese food. How do you know it? Oh, because um, in France, there are a lot of uh, immigrants from former colonies and from, well, Lebanon. And um, my parents would often buy little boxes of um, uh, of tabula. 
when I was a kid. I would eat. There was probably a lot of artificial stuff in that. Um, but I really liked it. it. It was one of the only things I would want to eat. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay. Okay, so it is Chariots of Fire. That is a nice song. Wait, Gorvo, do you want to say that you want to be Vangelis? I think that I'm missing quite a lot here. Loki is Nordic, not Greek. No, yes, Loki is Nordic. My grandfather is telling me that you are an ENFP in the NETE loop. He knows law about MBTI because in heaven, there's a group of discussions of such matter in the Biblio heaven. <laughs> Biblio heaven. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, sometimes I wish I were an ENFP. It would be such an easy life. Or not an easy life, but it would be like more socially acceptable to be extroverted. Um, but uh, being an ENFP is chaotic as hell. My mom is ENFP. Still Loki here. I think I will always be on the side of rebels and underdogs. You have to pick from another pantheon. Ah. Uh, I don't really know the Norse gods that much. I was never super interested in them, but I did like mythology. Um, let me think. Um, I mean, there are like these female gods that are less known. I mean, there's Thor and Odin and stuff. And Odin has a slipe near the eight-legged horse, which I like. Are you half Lebanese? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I'm uh, white as can be. <laughs> and never lived in Lebanon or anywhere. I've never gone anywhere south of the Mediterranean Sea. Basically. Uh, I wonder what TM is doing, if he's trolling or what he's, what he's into. Um... TM, I thought that you were an ISFJ. Maybe, maybe your sort of trolling is very strange. I know that ISFJs have funny sense of humor sometimes. Uh, my best friend is one, so. Uh, I'm going back into the chat because I know that I missed quite a lot. Oh, Alexander Washman grew up in Berlin. I really want to go to Berlin someday and not for the partying but for like the museums <laughs> I know I'm, I'm a nerd but it's like I need to go to apparently they have great museums according to uh, my uh, German friend um, he uh, his parents were from Berlin uh, and they met in like East Germany back when that was a thing. Um, and well, it was tough for them. So my, my friend had a really tough upbringing because his parents were really strict. Uh, so I've never met his parents because I'm a bit scared of actually going there. I wonder what Schumann is meaning about the bakery though. It's, you like the, you enjoy the bakery sortiment until you order something. Wait, wh where are you? I don't understand. Uh, okay. I, I can't explain the US and, and like this. Um, oh, so Carm worked in Protos years ago, though I last don't recall pomegranates. Probably can't spell it anymore either. Hmm. Huh. In Produce, does that mean that you're um, uh, picking um, vegetables or that you're packaging them or that you're selling them? Solacium uh, says that this is a little bit like meditation, which is nice. 
um, grenadine ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is Lord, did Lord, Lord Gonzo leave? <laughs> I missed that. I missed that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lord Gonzo is always going to play Dungeons and Dragons. I guess that he does this every Saturday, just like I do my Hello Fresh every Saturday. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Sick Purvis Magna. Oh, the retainer. Oof, yes, it is terrible to have braces. It is, it's nice that Lord Gonzo uh, did not need his uh, braces anymore and that he can go and play Dungeons and Dragons with his friends. Mm. I'm missing quite a lot here, so I'm going really far back. I think that I uh, did not miss anything anymore. Let's go back up. Put into produce department at the supermarket. Oh, is it like uh, those people who sit behind the counter and and cut up meats and stuff? Or are you the one that makes sure that everything is refrigerated, right? I, I don't know. Just stocking fruits and veggies. Mm. Okay. That's nice. I mean, pomegranates are not a very regular fruit to eat. I, I guess it's a fruit. I guess it's a fruit. TM. Do you want to be put into a uh, timeout? <laughs> okay, Alexander grew up in a posh area of Berlin. Wasn't really representative of what Berlin is known for, like discos and hipsters and graffiti. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm going to see the museums. I love museums. Okay, TM has an actual question. What do you think about leaving civilization and living in the forest? Where do you live? Well, I cannot tell you guys where I live, but I mean, some people here do know where I live. Um, but um, I think that it's an unrealistic uh, idea. It, it, it does fit my cottage core aesthetic vibe that I want to get, but You, you can't be fully independent from people. But, um, so, I mean, it's possible to um, live in a forest, but living off the grid, if that's what you're asking, that is, it's not really possible or good. Um, I just watched a video essay today that was about um, the construction of cities and the city planning and how uh, the US doesn't have any walkable cities anymore and that they're gentrifying all these core neighborhoods, which is hard. Um, so, but it, one of the important points of the video is that, well, living in the countryside is not actually more eco-friendly than living in town because you're actually using more gas to get to places so there's this idealization of living in the countryside but it's maybe not close to reality uh, but yes it, it's a nice dream oh you think tear is good from north big pantheon I don't know anything about Tyr. I learned a, this is a positive ENFP artist in Arizona recently. Not a dull moment. 
yes, they, they are really fun, but they can be gossipy. My mom, we, we had a Skype um, uh, discussion and she's like, oh, I hate gossip and there are people who are gossiping. And then she tells me the gossip and I'm like, well, that, that's like, I guess the point. I mean, I know that I'm your daughter and all, but, but it's like, that's not what I mean. Um, so, but it, we talked for hours and hours. So that's why I'm tired also, because we Skyped until one in the morning. Um, and I think that we got on at 9 p.m. So we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked without really saying anything about our current feelings or situation. It was just a blah, 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 blah about everything in the world, you know? And it's really exciting. I love it. But it does tire me out. So yeah. Oh, Blade Runner. I mean, I, I saw Blade Runner with my INFJ friend. It was one of the last movies that we saw together before we broke up. Um, I did not, I cannot say that I understood what was going on, but the score was very beautiful. I, I, I agree. I haven't been to New York yet, though Chicago is sometimes too much as far as the high, fast-paced energy alone. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I can guess. It's just that I think that European cities were created so much are so much older than American cities. And American cities were built around the car. Well, now we're getting away from being car society. And so American cities aren't adapted to that and are much more busy in terms of streets and stuff. Um, while in Paris, yes, there's a lot of streets and stuff, but it's not like the car is the center. It's more like there are a lot of people around. Um, but the architecture, the structure of the city is just different. You know, New York is like very much just the, the all squares. Everything is squares. Um, which makes things easy when you are trying to find your way. But it does not make it easy to like live because like you have to pick up the trash, you know, it's it's not very efficient. Um, New York may, might be the only walkable, um, the only walkable uh, US city for the most part. Um, but obviously there are the suburbs there too. I mean, no, no European city is completely walkable either, but it's better. Okay, so TM is going to marry soon. I don't know why he feels the need to express it to the world, but I'm glad for you. So Alexander says, I can't be sure if I've ever been to Berlin, even though I grew up there. But that's often a kind of thought that you have about home cities. Like, do you really feel like you have been to Paris if you are Parisian, for example? Mm, maybe not. If you've only stayed in your own area, then maybe not. You haven't done like all the tourist things that you maybe would want to do. But you can always be a tourist in your own town. Um, that's kind of how I feel about Stockholm, is that I go... When I come back, I'm like, oh, yay, I can be like a tourist again. And it's my home, kind of, but it's not. What do you think is most challenging about growing up in France for an INFP or living in Sweden as an INFP? Okay, I'm getting a lot of questions now. Um, l l let me do one at a time. Alexander. Okay. Obviously, culture isn't a monolith and stuff. Being an INFP in France is um, tough because 
you're confronted with people shouting and um, giving criticism quite uh, frequently and administration being very difficult. So that's what I would say is very challenging about uh, living in France as an INFP. There is also, depending on where you live in France, there can also be a lot of um, conformity still to old culture. So depending on where you live, obviously. Um, so there is still like reverence to, you know, the traditional way of viewing people and things. And that can be difficult if you're queer um, or if you have like, you know, if you're just strange in any way. I don't dress very well. Uh, and that is glaringly obvious to a French person. But in Sweden, it's much more relaxed about that. Like people can just wear, obviously there are people who are well dressed in Sweden too, but you can wear kind of things that aren't the, the usual pattern, the, the clear cut. So it's better in Sweden in that respect. What's uh, worse in France too is that there's more extroversion and much more like talking to people and you're supposed to say certain things to certain people otherwise they get angry because they think that you're rude so basically my mom is also is not french so she gets confused because apparently if it's after five in the evening then you have to say bonsoir to people but you don't say bon après-midi ever so basically in the time period between 12 and um and five it's a bit of a weird zone where it's like you can't really say bonne journée anymore because half of the day has gone and like it's very confusing so there are a lot of these social conventions or like you have to say bonjour before you ask for any directions or anything you have to say bonjour because otherwise they'll be like bonjour <laughs> and that has happened a few times to me and to my mom and uh, it's not like I'm trying to be rude. I'm just trying to save you time by saying, like, excuse me. I'm saying excuse me instead of saying bonjour. But apparently that is, like, the wrong thing. So people have their way of, like, what is rude and what is not. And, and that can be difficult to navigate when you're not an FE user or a TE user. Like, I'm not a TE dominant. So that can be difficult. And also the education system is very rigid and not much room for creativity. And it's still that way, even, even though it's gone a long time since I've been in France. And in Sweden, um, it's much easier because people are introverts and are more accepting of people dressing differently and stuff. Um, However, there is a passive aggressiveness, which you won't understand um, that easily. And this sort of sense that you have to be, everybody has to be equal, it has to be homogenous in a way. And that is difficult. Uh, if you're an immigrant in Sweden, you get a lot of social benefits and help. Um, from the government, but it's also very difficult to integrate because um, it's it's such a homogenous society to start with. I mean, like, there are some old people that hadn't seen, like, brown people until they were, you know, until they were over 50 years old. Um, now there are brown people everywhere and that... <laughs> some older people are want to go back to how things were and I'm not saying that France is better it's not uh, but it's there's a little bit more of a acceptance that there are people who are different um, so it's difficult to answer that question what I would say is difficult in Sweden is uh, 
um, is that basically and also the fact that like everybody has to have a consensus at the end of meetings and if you're having your own opinion then it's like you know maybe you shouldn't have your own opinion <laughs> um, so you just stay quiet but otherwise I think that it's pretty much easier to be an INFP in Sweden than in France um, yes, and Sig Parmas Magna agrees that I summed up, summed up the situation in France. Yes, some people, yes, a lot of people say bonjour at 8 p.m. But sometimes it's like, you say bonjour to somebody, and then they say bonsoir. And it's like, okay, did I say it? Did I say the wrong greeting? You know, like, are you trying to correct me? <laughs> like, it's hard to know, you know? Um, so I, I don't get it. Um, Chicago is fairly walkable, though recommended to do so in small groups if possible, reduces chances of mugging. I know, encouraging, right? Huh. Yeah, Chicago, I've not heard that great of uh, reviews in terms of crime rates, but I don't know. INFJ and INFP are quasi-identity relation and do not agree with each other. Oh. Boy, I know. Um, I uh, I made my last video about um, my relationship with my uh, INFJ best friend, and we were very similar in certain ways, but actually we were exact opposites in other ways. And it, it, it can work, it can work, but both sides need to communicate well, because otherwise it doesn't work. Um, and it can work for years, or seem to work, and then not. Your, my ENFJ friend isn't gossipy, she just changes the topic every 45 seconds or so, ha. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> There's that too. There is that too. Sometimes living in this countryside can isolate you from the world. I have a friend who has a sister living in the mountains, and she's not in touch with what's happening with the world. Sometimes I feel like that's how it is in Sweden. Um, that you are less co in co connection with uh, the rest of the world. But I kind of like that. Um, I, I like that in a way. Um, I do get a feeling like, oh, when I come back to France, I'm like, oh, this this is a place that where things are happening. And things are important, you know, because France is an important country in the world. And like in Sweden, all the, like most of the news is not Swedish news. It's news about international things. In France, most of the news is French and some of it is international. And then the U.S. is like, it's if barely any other country exists uh, except for the U.S. And the countries that did that the U.S. is currently at war with, or, you know. I'm making huge oversimplifications here, but it's kind of like you, you can sense the country's importance when you're there. And Sweden is not an important player in the world scale. And also, in general, there's more, like, forests and nature here, so. Um... Okay, Alexander says, same in Germany in regards to shouting and criticism. It was horrible. I also came from a narcissistic family. It was complete hell. I'm sorry, Alexander. That's not good. There are so many people who, are, who have terrible families. I'm, I'm quite grateful that I have an okay family, um, even though they, they were not perfect. Oh, <laughs> Schumann um, was meaning that there was so much sortiment. What is my favorite MBTI type? I'll need to think about that one. I agree on going full hermit since humans are social animals, but I think that there should be there could be rare individuals who could be capable of doing that, going off grid, while most of us need others. Yes, there are some people who can do that. Um, but I think that they would maybe become a little bit paranoid of people or 
There was this patient I had once, and he developed schizophrenia from living alone in the woods. But maybe it was the schizophrenia that led him to go alone in the woods. I don't know. What do you think is most challenging? Oh, I, I already put that. Wait. Okay, my favorite MBTI type. Let, let me think. <laughs> this is hard, but if there was a type that I could be, I would say that I would want to be an ENFP. They lead such crazy lives. And it just seemed like they're the INFPs, but like the, the more confident INFPs, <laughs> you know? And that's why I, I like ENFPs. Um, I mean, it, it depends on what you mean by like. Which one do I like most? Like, which ones do I like to be around most? Which ones do I like to be most? Um, I don't know. I mean, I love INFJs to death. But I, uh... <sighs> but there is so much messed up in the um, relation with INFPs. Um, and I'm not the only person saying that, so I know that it's not like only me <laughs> who's having these issues. Um, but they are the best people to have intellectual Um I, I must admit that I, I, I have a soft spot for our INFJs. I mean, maybe to survive in this society, maybe we should be like ISTPs or ISTJs. But I wouldn't say that they're my favorite type. <laughs> like, I like ISFJs as well. They are, they're so nice and predictable and cozy to be around. Um, and that's why my best friend is an ISFJ. At the moment, INTPs are kind of uh, a thing. Um, at least on this channel. But I must say that there are some INTPs that are um, not at all on the same page as me. I'm not going to go into it, Alexander. Um, you can um, you can watch my last video where I um, talk about that. Um, about my uh, meeting with the psychologist on how how I talked to my friend breakup with uh, my INFJ friend. It's basically INFPs and INFJs are don't have any of the same functions. So I knew that we were extremely different, but we are also, I mean, on the inside, the way that they think is just not at all the way that INFPs think. And yet they seem to come to the same conclusions and be interested in certain similar things, you know, like we're interested in the humanities and and in poetry and art and uh, like philosophy, like on the surface, it seems like INFPs and INFJs are like like soulmates made in heaven. But uh, <laughs> but they're not. Uh, <laughs> it's. I think it's the FI and the FE clash, pretty much. And because they cannot connect um, even on the NE, NI bit, or SESI bit, but it's mostly the FE and FI clash. Uh, 
the only thing is that ISFJs do have SI and E, so in that way they are more similar to INFPs. So they, in in a weird way, they get along better with us. Um, and there is better communication. But it's still not 100% great because, because if he will never understand if I. If I, I think, understands if he much better because if he is an extroverted function. And so, like, we know that social conventions are a thing and stuff. It's just that we don't prioritize it. But INFJs, ISFJs, ENFJs, uh, ESFJs, they see FI and they're like, what? <laughs> it's like, that came out of nowhere. And it's like, no. Well, INFPs and ISFPs, they're like, they think that the FE user is coming out of nowhere because we didn't re react in the way that we were supposed to react to things, um, social conventions and stuff. So then we're like, what? That came out of nowhere and you never told me. And um, they're like, I was sending you subtle cues. And my, you know, if he is like, if he is quite passive aggressive at times. And uh, it gets on my nerves sometimes. Um, okay, INFJ is the paladin and INFP is the cleric. I don't really know what that means. But I, I, they, they seem like totally different vibes. Uh, I feel most understood by ENFPs and ISFJs myself. That is, if that is what they are. That no. yes, I agree with that actually. I, I really do. I feel like, even though my ISFJ friend me gets overwhelmed by my crazy chaotic nature and everything, I think that. He understood what stands what I'm looking for in life in a way that NI users just they, they're so confused by like you don't have a vision for your life like no I don't uh, and NI users often want to be around somebody who has a drive who has goals and um, knows what they went from life. And it's like, I know what I want from life, but through my FI and not through my any e or non-existent NI. Um, I don't have a vision of what, what I want. I have a feeling that this is what makes me happy, kind of. That's more like it. But it's funny that we can reach the same point through two different paths, yes. That is exactly it. So that like me and my INFJ friend, we would come to the same conclusion. And I was like, oh, can you explain that process? And it was like, it makes no sense to me. <laughs> A completely different process. Like, he, would, he would tell me and I would understand in the end. But, and I would be like, hmm, I never thought of it that way. And he would be the same with me. So that's what really worked out really well. No question, but what about TE types? You want to relax this talk a bit. What is it about TE types? Do I like TE types? TM is like on drugs or something. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm going to sleep for a long time. I will be back once the sun shines again. Yes, good night. Yes, okay, I know that these are role playing terms, but Paladin is more like a knight priest, a bit zealous and direct worldview. Cleric is more like a spiritual priest. Looking at the best and everyone in a more compassionate way. Yes. I think that it's interesting that, I mean, if we're going to get into socionics, is that the INFJ and the INFP have each other's um, uh, critical parent function, the sixth function um, for INFPs is NI, and the sixth function for INFJs is FI. So we are pretty critical with that function. And so we can be pretty critical about other people with that function. And so I think that for INFJs, it's like 
oh, well, you need to respect, like, my values, you know? And I'm like, and my values are the same as everybody else's, basically, because it's iffy, actually, that they use. It's like, you need to follow this, otherwise you're not a good person. And it's a pretty simplistic way of using FI. But for INFPs, the NI, it seems to us that people with NI are just like throwing a dice and saying like, oh, this is what's going to happen. And so that kind of feels like critical, like you can't know that. How can you know that, you know? And we think that, oh, well, things are going to go wrong, you know, that because we have the, any kind of crazy vibe. So we're like, this is going to go wrong. But that's not how it, that's not how NI works. So we're using each other's primary function in like the wrong way. So it doesn't really work. But so that's why I think that the paladin would be a little bit zealous and direct. While a cleric is more trying to find each individual. Um, Okay, TM, nice dreams. <laughs> I know nothing about Dungeons and Dragons. No, me neither. I mean, uh, I know from video games about the, that there are these certain archetypes. I also hear when someone pushes me to have a vision or a drive. But ENFJ are cool. I love them. Yeah. I, I love ENFJs too. I have uh, two ENFJ friends. Um, at least. And... They're, they're really wonderful and sweet to talk about, too. But I think that they sometimes have, like, ulterior thoughts. Like, they really don't actually like it, but they, their FE rules them so much that they're just, like... They're so compelled to be nice about it that they don't think for themselves, like, oh, I actually don't agree at all with what this person is saying. And... Uh, I don't really love that, but um, I must say that they are very, very, very nice and very fun to be around. And they appreciate INFPs in a way that I think that very few types do. Um, they appreciate it and they're like the ones that include us in the group because they see that we're like not really vibing with the rest of the people. And as I said, I went to a birthday party uh, that had like, he had invited like 30 people and I knew none of them except for uh, my ENFJ friend. And he made me feel welcome. And I'm really grateful that he, he saw that I was like to the side and that he uh, tried to make me as comfortable as possible so that I could actually enjoy the party. So I think that they're really skilled at that. Shared SI between ISFJ and INFP. Real empathy and this holds no judgment. Yes. I think that NI users and SI users, like, NI users see SI users as boring and, like, no drive, no motivation to improve their lives or that kind of thing. But I think the INFPs, in a way, were kind of the more, most, like, the home body kind of NF. Um where we kind of want to have a stable lifestyle, um, not shake things up all the time, um, not be revolutionary in, in any way, really. It's, it's less about making an impact and more about just like regulating yourself so that you can live um, a pleasant life. You have an ENFJ friend and she always wants to cater to people and I'm never sure if she does that or if, if it's what she wants or if she wants to just please others. Hard to say. But I have talked to my ENFJ friend, uh, the other one, uh, about quite deep issues and it. I, I think that a lot of things that she does is just because she uh, wants to please other people. 
she doesn't know what she herself needs. Um, and even though she says that she knows because she's been through therapy and all sorts of stuff, um, I don't know. Um, it's sweet that they want to take care of everybody, but, you know, it's, um, it's a little bit sad, though, um, because they, they have the pot potential to do all sorts of things that they would find interesting. My INFJ friend, she wants to work with um, radiology and uh, nuclear medicine. And that's a very TI job, I would say. You know, it's not like interacting with people a lot. But I think that she does do a great job because she's so passionate about this thing. But she gets all these self-doubts about, like, is this really what I should be doing? Coming from an INFP involved with an INFP, INFPs are freaking amazing and make the best soulmates. Never change yourself for anyone. Oh, that's nice to hear, Marma Gill. It really is. Sometimes I feel like, you know, INFPs, like, we're so different from each other. But I think that it's the FI, like, we can really connect on that. NSI. Uh, NNE. I mean, all of the t things, but... I think that I connect with types that have the same functions as me. Um, or at least one of the pairings is similar. Or that they have so much FE that like it covers up all of the uh, ulterior motives. So ESFJs and um, ENFJs have none of the same functions as me. But it works, kind of. She has a really time, hard time setting boundaries and then she withdraws and wants to be left alone. Mm. That's kind of what happened with my INFJ friend. I know INFJ is not the same as ENFJ, but it's like, yeah, okay, so you have a hard time setting boundaries. But then it's like, okay, you just disappear from my life. Once I got, we get our own stuff sorted out, INFPs are just amazing and others as well, just like you said. Oh, it's sweet to have all these INFJs and INFPs and INTPs and stuff around. But it's very nice that INFPs can find each other online. Okay, so uh, I usually end these um, uh, lives with um, going through books that uh, we've been reading and stuff. So um, I have been reading mostly non-fiction books. Um, I haven't had much energy to read um, because, well, I haven't been feeling really good. Um, I read one that was a book um, about um, depersonalization syndrome and another book, um, uh, oh, DDD, depersonalization derealization uh, disorder. And a really interesting book. Actually, it's a pretty common condition that is separate from PTSD or... I mean, you can have it co-occurring, but you can also have it separate um, from uh, borderline or from social anxiety or from any other um, a psychiatric uh, problem. So that was really interesting to, to read about. Um, I also read, uh, like, it was a children's or young adult book about, it's written by um, the author of one of my favorite books, um, it's called, uh, well, the book that she wrote was um, in Swedish, called um, uh, Autis, um About Women on the Spectrum. Uh, and 
I basically related to everything that she said. <laughs> so um, really interesting book. Uh, this one was a little bit less good, but it was because it was directed to young adults. So obviously it can't be that deep and also um, pretty oversimplified. Um, but it was um, it was an easy read and it was funny because it talks it was called um, the artist's guide to the universe or like it's called normal people the artist's guide to the universe and it was basically like um, well making fun of neurotypical people <laughs> um, for like caring about like what's your um, uncle's wife getting uh, uncle getting divorced or something like who cares and so it talks about like it's the guide to the autistic person to navigate uh, normal people and um, so i thought that, that was a pretty funny um have we broken the record no wait what record the record of time? No. The record of time is two hours and 48 minutes or something like that. I know that Schumann has been uh, keeping track of time. Uh, yeah, it's worth mentioning that I'm a nine wing eight and she's a four wing five. So maybe that makes things more dynamic and spicy. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a six wing seven from what I understand. Not a new life record, but it doesn't matter this time. <laughs> she is like when I'm around others, I can't do what I want. And I'm like, of course, what the fuck? Of course you can. Yeah. Yeah. Schumann is a timekeeper. Oh yeah. I was quite close. I thought it was two hours and 48 minutes. It was two hours and 50 minutes. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's good to have an INTP around. Uh, precision is key. N no, that's a TI thing, the precision. I mean, of course, it's T as well. But it gave me some time to like eat the actual stuff that I cook. So that's good. Um, so I was reading those books and then they were um, really easy re read. Um, yeah, the electrical engineering. Um, I um, took out this book from the library, Loveless, which I've barely just like s scanned through the pages. It's uh, about an aromatic and asexual person. So I, well, it's the person who wrote Hops, Heartstopper, I think. And uh, I'm interested because I want to know about how, how that, would, that, that subject would be treated, you know, in a book. Because I identify as on the arrow uh, a spectrum. Now, if I do re experience romantic attraction or not, I'm not sure. But uh, sexual attraction, no, I don't think so. Because it's pretty much the same for me for men and women. And it's like so many times that people say like, uh, they have so many ideas about asexuality that aren't true. And there's such a normativity around these things. So I'm really interested in reading that book. I also have a Haruki Murakami Norwegian Wood, but I don't think I'm going to be reading it because um, apparently that's one of his more depressing ones. And I don't want a depressing book right now. Um, so yeah, and I'm reading um, this book. It's also a Swedish book. Um, it's called a Post-Covid Lottery. And it's about 
the pandemic is a, a, the elephant in the room with its long tail. And it's about a doctor who got COVID at the beginning of 2020. And then she was like a super, superhuman person, you know, she actually would um, uh, run marathons several times and all sorts of stuff. And then she gets a COVID and she gets long-term COVID and then her whole life is messed up and she has to learn how to live with this. And this book was written at the end of uh, 2022, um, I think. Uh, it was given to me by uh, my INTJ friend who works at the post-COVID um, place in, uh, in Stockholm. And she said that uh, this was really good. Oh, I was actually published 2023. So this is uh, like the latest. Um, I think that she's being a little bit too critical of the doctors because we didn't know anything about COVID at the beginning. So obviously, how were they supposed to know about post-COVID when they had only gone, gone like two months of COVID? Like uh, people were just concerned of not dying. And... I mean, uh, the world was crazy place um, in 2020. Uh, people did not know what was going on. Uh, and I think that our mental health was pretty bad. I just feel like it's kind of annoying that she, she's writing this book for everybody and not just, and not just doctors. And then she's like, you sh if you have post-COVID, then you need to ask, you need to, like, go to your doctor and tell them to do all sorts of different MRI scans of your heart and all sorts of things. And it's like, I don't have the possibilities to do that. Um, unless you go to, like, a private doctor. So I'm a little bit, like, skeptical about, like, her message in this. But it is very interesting to see how... Like her story uh, about how she got through this and what kinds of questions that wakes. You got COVID from a Coldplay concert. Oh, I remember that Coldplay concert. Uh, my ISFJ friend went to it when it was in Gothenburg. Um, I didn't go. Um, I got COVID at the end of uh, 2022. Yeah. And it was because, like, at the very end, like the December 2022. And I got it from uh, the nurse boss, the boss of the nurses at my work. So, I mean, I don't know exactly who I got it from, but I, there was nobody else who was sick right at that moment, except for her. So that really sucked because I kept myself so, like, I was so good at keeping all the things with patients and in my private life. And then I go to work and then one of my colleagues gives it to me. So that, that was kind of sucked. You see, I never had COVID. It was asymptomatic. Yeah. I mean, I, I never got COVID until the end of 2022, which was pretty late for getting it. Um, and by then, like, you know, testing was almost like, I mean, testing was still a thing, but it, it wasn't to the same degree. Um, and then in 2023, it would basically disappear uh, from everybody's brain. Um, my dad, who was super, super paranoid about COVID and he had like the best mask ever, he, he got COVID. And my mom, she didn't. So there's not much of an explanation, really. I just, yeah, I don't know exactly, but I'm glad I did not get post COVID. Even though my INTJ friend, she thinks that I got post-COVID because I got burnt out at the beginning of 2023, which was like a month 
or two after I got COVID. So she, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's nice because she works the post COVID. So she just thinks that everybody has post COVID. And that's very nice, but like, I don't, I don't want to have post COVID. <laughs> and also, um, Sometimes things are just correlated and not, there's no causation, you know. So there's that. So that's what I am reading at the moment. Um, I do hope to, to read a little bit more fiction books in the future. Um, is there anything that you uh, want to ask or that uh, you are reading currently? Um, Otherwise, we'll close for the day because I don't want to reach the. <laughs> I don't want to reach the record. Some poetry soon. Oh. I wish. I don't know. At the moment, I've been feeling pretty uh, not great about life. Um. So. And maybe not right now, but uh, soon. Um, I need to like find a poem that really catches my eye and uh, look through the ones that have been recommended to me. Um, so uh, I'm going to take some time with that. Um, also the crochet hasn't been, um, I haven't been doing uh, a lot of crochet lately. So if I want to do poetry and crochet, I need to like be in the mood to do both. Um, so yeah. I'm going to just put uh, the food away, but I'll come back. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, then um, we are closed for the day. Um, I uh, still have like one, like two more Hello Freshes that are reduced price. So I think that that's, um, we're not going to be doing much more Hello Fresh for a while now. But I have um, two more recipes. Um, one of them was the salmon that I uh, did this morning and uh, I have another one uh, which is uh, Beuf Bourguignon <laughs> which um, I, I hope that it reminds me of my childhood <laughs> uh, we'll see um, but that one is a little bit of a longer recipe because it takes such a long time to like mash the potatoes and stuff um, but yeah so that's uh, what's waiting for me um <laughs> uh thank you sick parvis magna um yes it's uh wonderful to see everybody because it's kind of funny to see you guys uh talking back and forth um and uh, so i'll see you next time okay so bye bye guys <laughs>